There's a lot of great new motherboards launching as of late. However, it's the MSI MPG X870E carbon Wi-Fi I have secretly been looking forward to. Sure, it's not quite as extreme as some of the other boards on the market and it's far from a flagship board, but at the same time, it looks like a sweet spot between cost and features that is sure to appeal to those building a high-end gaming PC. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. <sighs> I'm never gonna be an eSports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son, it is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. So with all X870 and X870E motherboards, it features support for all AM5 CPUs, such as the AMD Ryzen 7000, 8000, and of course, the newest 9000 series. Plus, it comes with a very potent 18 plus 2 plus 1 VRM configuration with 110 amp SPS power stages, making it one of the best equipped motherboards for this chipset, at least when it comes to power delivery. You also get a ton of MSI and AMD technologies too, such as Lightning Gen 5 for the PCIe and M.2 storage, Ultra Connect networking like 5G, 2.5G, Wi-Fi 7 and USB 4 technologies, their easy release systems and of course MSI's own Shield Frozer 2 cooling technology. All tuned to deliver even better performance and that should hopefully give it an edge over the competition. And of course, other MSI models further down the price range. Now with its more feature packed power delivery setup, this should be a very punchy motherboard and should be able to overclock your hardware, maintain boost clocks longer, and just generally stand up to being pushed to the limits for extended periods. The larger VRM cooling and armor aren't just for show either, allowing the board to deal with more intense workloads without compromising performance, or at least that's how it should work. And we'll be putting the VRMs through their paces later on in this review, so definitely watch out for that. So let's get into the important stuff, and I want to start off with the all-important packaging. It's something that we stopped doing for a while, but I think it's one of the most important parts of buying any product. Now, the box itself is definitely one of the more vibrant that we've seen, with bright colours and artwork that will definitely stand out in a physical store. And it also gives us, I guess, our first glance as to what's actually on offer from an aesthetic standpoint of the board. And straight away, I'm sure you're going to agree with me, things are looking very, very good. The rear has a big focus on listing the key points of the board, including that all-important VRM system, the easy M.2 shield design, Lightning Gen 5, Wi-Fi 7, a premium thermal design, easy PCIe release, USB 4, and dual LAN ports, of which one is 5G, while the other is 2.5G. There's also a spec table, so you can see exactly what the board gives you in terms of slots and connectivity, and just overall, kind of tells you everything you need to know about the board before you've even opened the box. So again, especially handy if you're in a store and you're trying to compare board to board. Now inside, talking about the accessories, is the Wi-Fi antennas, which incorporate a quick connect technology. So already, based on the box and the antennas, we can see quite a big focus on making building with it, I guess as easy as possible. There's also a USB flash drive for software and drivers, a standoff tool, an M.2 standoff for smaller length drives, front panel adapter, RGB and addressable RGB cables, a handy splitter cable for new MSI cooling products that incorporate the PWM and RGB into one cable, two SATA cables of which one is right angled, a set of stickers, and the all important literature, though they have actually kept that down to a minimum. So I guess we could say that it's pretty plentiful in terms of the set of accessories with actually some unique added extras to again aid in installation of the board and you're going to start seeing a theme about this whole easy DIY PC stuff. Now the board itself, MSI has actually gone above and beyond with the aesthetics of their latest carbon motherboard although in fairness all the previous carbon boards were I guess pretty good in the looks department too. There's a range of huge heat sinks all finished in jet black on a black PCB with all black fittings throughout. There are only, I guess, a few touches of silver from the socket and the PCIe slots, but largely they'll be hidden once you've installed your hardware anyway, giving it a nearly all black, somewhat stealthy design. Now, there's an ARGB Dragon because ARGB makes everything better and an ARGB Carbon logo on here too, which you can turn off or you can have any color you like. So that's a nice little touch, adding to the more premium aesthetic look. 
However, aesthetics aside, there is a very impressive, as I mentioned, 18 plus 2 plus 1 digital VRM design around the CPU socket, which puts it firmly into the more enthusiast overclocking bracket. So maxing out any of the latest CPUs, in theory, should be a breeze. There's a dedicated heatsink for the primary Gen 5 M.2, and it comes with MSI's Easy M.2 Clip 2 mounting system for easy installation. And removal of the M.2 heatsink is easy as well, where you just push and lift. There's also large heat sinks over the bottom half of the board, under which you'll find four more M.2 mounts, as well as an upgraded PCH heatsink to ensure everything is running optimally. For the GPU, they've improved on the easy DIY features here too, with a physical button release and an identifier to inform you if it's actually locked into place or not. Now being a carbon board, we also have features that are great for troubleshooting, including the easy debug LED to let you know which part of the boot process you're actually at, as well as the digi debug LED for those all important error codes. Around the back, you get plenty of ultra fast connectivity with the latest USB 4 Type-C technology, both 2.5 GBE and 5 GBE LAN, as well as that all important Wi-Fi 7. And I love that they've included three control buttons too, for BIOS flashing, CMOS, and then even a programmable smart button that can be configured within the BIOS. MSI have also gone pretty hard with USBs, and all are at least 10 gigabit per second and range between Type-A and Type-C. So even for a board of this calibre, you shouldn't have any problems with connectivity. You also have a new way of attaching your Wi-Fi antennas, thanks to new easy connectors. So again, there's a big sense on making installation of the board and every step of the way as easy as possible. Now, probably the real reason you're here, you wanna know about those all important VRMs and kind of more what's going on behind the hood. Now the Carbon Wi-Fi is what's classed as a premium ATX motherboard, so it's designed to meet the demands of high performance computing. And therefore it features an eight layer PCB that therefore enhances signal integrity and power delivery, making it well suited for intensive workloads. With its impressive 18 plus two plus one phase design, this motherboard provides a robust foundation for handling high end CPUs like the 9950X, along with extensive multitasking. Now at the heart of the VRM is the Renesis RAA229620 PWM controller, which efficiently manages the 18 V core phases and two SOC phases, ensuring stable power delivery even under heavy loads. This controller is renowned for its reliability and performance in demanding scenarios, making it an excellent choice for creators and gamers alike, and well, everything in between. Now the V-Core and SOC phases utilize the Renesis RAA2209004 SPS power stages rated at 110 amps each. Now these power stages are designed for high efficiency and thermal performance, allowing for clean and stable voltage regulation. This configuration offers ample headroom for overclocking and ensures that power delivery remains consistent even during extreme workloads. And well, in my opinion, 110 amps is pretty crazy and could actually be deemed as, well, overkill. Now for the miscellaneous phases, MSI have opted for the Alpha and Omega AOZ5516QI Dr. MOS, rated at 55 amps. This choice integrates the high and the low side MOSFET along with the driver IC into a single package, reducing board space and, well, enhancing thermal efficiency. The Dr. MOS design contributes to improved power management, ensuring that the motherboard itself maintains optimal performance across various tasks, again, from gaming to content creation and everything in between. Now, before we actually take a look at the VRM performance, I do wanna to touch on something, I guess, very new that MSI have implemented. And well, you can't actually see it here, but it's the BIOS. And I know what you're thinking, it sounds really, really simple, but MSI has, well, gone all out with their new BIOS on these new motherboards. And while we only have one to show you right now, we have seen others on our recent trip to China, of which we will have a video on soon. And well, they've completely redesigned the interface. And in all honesty, sorry MSI, you're probably not gonna appreciate me saying this, but it's about time. As I didn't really like the way that they tabbed the pages before. This is, I guess, much easier to understand, much easier to find everything you need. And there seems to be a lot more options in general. Plus, they're all really detailed and just bright and vibrant and colorful with each motherboard having a colored match BIOS. So whether you go for MEG, MAG, MPG, it all kind of ties in. Now, I can't actually wait until we get more of these motherboards in so we can kind of really deep dive into what they've done across the range with their BIOS, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. And like I say, it's about time. Now, before we do delve into the VRM info, we have run quite a few benchmark tests to make sure that performance is within the range that we'd expect based on other similar boards that use the same chipset. There really isn't 
too much to talk about. So I guess enjoy the charts as I whiz through them and feel free to pause them where you deem fit. Now, I will also say that some of the results on the MSI board were a little on the low side compared to the competition. And that's where we start things off with 3D Mark Time Spy. And in this, it just kind of fell behind most of the stack, though not the worst result that we saw. So we'll see how it goes in the other tests. 3D Mark CPU benchmark is where we saw some of the worst results out of the nine boards that we tested as it came in a fair bit lower than every other board tested, which all seemingly came in around the same ballpark figure. So maybe there's more to kind of meets the eye with this one and something else is afoot. PC Mark 10 redeemed itself as it was thrown into the mix, beating the more expensive Crosshair Hero board from Asus and matching up with the other boards tested. Then Cinebench R23 was, well, good. Though again, is on the lower end of the scale, but nothing out of the ordinary. While the updated version, Cinebench 2024, did show the MSI struggling somehow in the multi-core test, though single core was coming in identical to the competition. So I definitely think there's maybe an issue here between our processor and the motherboard, and hopefully it could be fixed with a simple BIOS update. Now in Blender, things look good sitting around the middle of the stack, though all results did come in within margin of error, so nothing again out of the ordinary. SuperPi saw a great result which came in faster than five other boards, all from ASUS, and matching that of the Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 ICE from Gigabyte, so looks like things are maybe back on track. W Prime was also matched across the board, so nothing that jumps out as good or bad, but I guess you could say it's good if it's lining up with the rest of the boards. Y Cruncher saw the carbon Wi-Fi coming in on the stronger end of the scale, but results here are so close that even though it's stronger, well, it's not by much. Ada64 across the board is consistently showing the MSI as on the lower end of the scale in terms of performance. Again, maybe a new BIOS is needed to harness the true potential of our 9950X, because at this point, things aren't looking amazing for the MSI board. It's not bad by any means, but I guess I was just expecting better. So moving over to gaming and Cyberpunk sees the carbon Wi-Fi coming in middle of the road with other boards doing better in the averages and the 1% low figures. But again, it's not exactly terrible and is well within the range that we'd expect. F123 again sees it sitting perfectly in the middle, though at over 300 FPS, you'd never be able to tell the difference between each of these boards tested anyway. Spider-Man also sees similar. There's, well, better boards, there's worse boards, and this just sits around the middle. Though again, does suffer a little in the 1% lows, but not as much as we saw with other boards like the Tough Gaming from Asus. Riftbreaker again sees middle of the road performance, which for a somewhat high end board, I did expect a little bit more from the board of this caliber, but as we know, motherboards don't generally lend huge amounts of extra performance, and it's more just seeing if everything lines up as it should. Then in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it picks itself back up slightly and sits in the mix with all the other boards tested at similar performance levels. So a little bit painful going through those sort of charts. So let's move on to something that does actually make a difference, boot time. And sadly, MSI comes in the worst here at just under 38 seconds, which is quite a stark difference compared to the other boards tested, which for the most part sat in the sub 30 second timeframe. Now do remember this is AMD, so memory training and all that. So things are looking better, but still I was expecting a little bit more. So other things that are affected, power draw. Well, at idle, it again, wasn't the best, but it also wasn't the worst. When looking at comparable data from the other boards, it is right in the mix, separated by just a few watts, with the exception of the mini ITX board, which you'd expect to use a little less power anyway. During Prime 95, the Carbon actually came in as the lowest ATX board in terms of sipping on power, only being beaten by the mini ITX board from the competition. Though I do fear that maybe more power would have seen the performance in our benchmarks increase slightly. So maybe MSI just got this one, I don't know, a little bit wrong, who knows. Then in Cinebench 2024, it's comparable to the other ATX boards tested and is well within reasonable levels of what we'd expect. So the real reason you're here, and sorry it took a while to get there, but VRM thermals. Now when it comes to testing, we use a mixture of measuring the sensor data from HW Info, along with two strategically placed K-type probes on the rear of the motherboard to measure the temperature from a few millimeters away from two different phases. We let the system idle for 10 minutes before taking our idle readings and then use Prime95 with small FFTs as well as Cinebench 2024 to show simulated worst case scenarios as well as a real world scenario too. And we do have a little break in between the two tests. Now looking at our results, we can see that the carbon Wi-Fi did end up on the somewhat hotter end of the scale at idle across the various probes and the sensor through software. And this was then reflected in our load tests in all cases. It's still within comfortable levels, don't get me wrong, but is definitely pushing towards the hotter end of the scale with comparable results to the likes of the mini ITX board, which is a form factor you'd naturally expect to be hotter. 
So I think it's clear that MSI maybe have a little bit of work to do on this board in terms of how the power is being delivered, what that means for performance, and of course, for heat. Now, normally I would say that the MSI Carbon Series is well known for being built for enthusiast gamers, creators, and streamers. And this new iteration is no exception, but well, it is. There's normally a strong focus on extreme performance with massively upgraded VRM configurations. And while it does have all of that, along with strong solid components at the heart of it, it sadly just falls a little bit flat. But there is a saving grace, so bear with me. I've been doing this job for too long. <laughs> I've been doing this job for many, many years. So I've seen every type of result and every type of situation arise. And I guess when you've been in the industry that long, you can learn to analyze when something isn't quite right. And well, this doesn't seem like it's generally a hardware issue, but instead it's something that should be able to be fixed within the BIOS. So I will actually be discussing things with MSI to see what the deal is there. Beyond performance, if we just put that to one side, as you might expect from a high-end board, the Carbon Wi-Fi makes no compromises on connectivity. It has 2.5G, it has 5G, it's well suited for high-speed home networks, NAS setups, fiber internet connections, has the inclusion of the latest Wi-Fi 7 standard, so it ensures exceptional wireless performance. And then on top of that, you get latest USB 4 technologies, along with tons upon tons of USB ports for all your peripherals. And they're all at very, very high speeds too. You know what they say, design for enthusiasts. Well, MSI has done exactly that. They've equipped the board with tons of M.2 mounts ready for the latest Gen 4 and Gen 5 drives, complete with large heat sinks for optimal cooling. It has a more robust PCIe slot design and quick release controls to further enhance the user experience. And for those who like to fine tune their system, there's BIOS level technologies such as Lightning Gen 5, which provides extensive options for performance optimizations. And all of this is wrapped in a sleek, aesthetically pleasing design that becomes, I guess, a hallmark of the Carbon series. But I have to bring the performance back into it. And I have to, I guess, answer the question. And it's a big one. Should you buy one? It's a tough one because it has this blend of high-end features, this user-friendly design, and as I mentioned over and over, the stunning looks. And the Carbon Wi-Fi is, at the heart of it, even if it's not priced as it, it is a premium motherboard choice for a wide range of users. As I mentioned, gamers, content creators, overclocking enthusiasts, all those types of users who want the very best hardware, the best performance, and lots of, let's call them quality of life features. But the performance side of things is just letting it down. And I, I honestly don't think that it's an issue with our board in general. It's either an issue with I guess the BIOS or maybe there's something more at play, who knows? But I honestly think it's the BIOS and I think it could be resolved by a simple update. And we will be investigating things a little bit further because we test what we class as out of the box performance. And these are the numbers we were given by our various pieces of benchmark softwares and tools. And while it's not bad, it's just a little lower than where it should be. And I know that it can do more and can do better. So let's see what the future holds for that one. Because right now, I think I can honestly say, at least on a performance standpoint, there are better boards out there. And again, apologies MSI, you're probably not gonna like that, but the proof is in the pudding, the facts and figures don't lie. So there we go. That's gonna about do it for this one. I don't really wanna delve too much into it because I don't think I need to trash the board because it's not a bad board. It's just performing a little bit subpar. So there you go, that's gonna do it for this one. A bit of a somber conclusion, but I hope you can kind of see why I came to that decision. If MSI can increase the performance, which based on the team that they have working there and knowing them personally, I know that they can find the lost performance. And then I guess I'd be singing from a completely different hymn sheet. But until then, this is where we're at. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to exclusive behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, updates on our office move, and much, much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.